that's hot. It's just a hot chocolate. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my November TBR. I have 10 good books to show you guys to try to keep myself accountable to to um, reading them this month. I'm just gonna hop into this video. The first two books I have are actually the Six of Crows duology, the first and second book. Yeah, I read Shadow and Bone in October and I really enjoyed it. I am actually on the last episode of this show. I don't know if I needed to read Crooked Kingdom, but it seems like not even this plot is in the first or the, in the show. I mean like some of it, but not all of it. If you've seen the show, you know. But anyways, yeah, I just kind of give it away, but I've already actually read this this month. I read it on the first day of November. And yeah, so Crooked Kingdom is next, but I really want to finish these, finish the show up. And yeah, those are the first two books on my November TBR. These three books are actually school books, so I know I'll be finishing them. But I have Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. This is a collection of poems by Walt Whitman. He's known to be um, super famous. I don't know. I've never read anything from him, but apparently this is like his life's great work. And so I actually have a reading due today that I haven't done yet, <laughs> but this is the first book. The next one is just the collective poems of Emily Dickinson. Um, I've read a few of Dickinson's poems, so I'm super excited for this one. And the last one is the, Captiv the Captivity of the Oatman Girls um, among the Apache and Mohawk Indians. Sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. But yeah, this one sounds really interesting. It is a, I think it's like a historical, I think it, I don't know how, what you would consider it. It's a nonfiction. It's like based off of a real story. So whatever that's considered, that's what this book is. Um, it sounds very, very traumatic, honestly, and I'm excited to read it just to see how it relates to the class that I'm in, but that's that. And the next one is one that was actually on my October TBR, and that is Disability Visibility. This is KU's common book this year, and essentially it is a collection of essays from individuals who are disabled. I'll just read the back. It says one in five people in the United States lives with a disability. Some are visible, others less apparent, but all are underrepresented in the media and popular culture. Now, just in time for the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act, activist Alice Wong brings together this urgent, galvanizing um, collection of contemporary essays by disabled people. I've read one of the essays and it was super good, so I'm looking forward to reading this. This just isn't a book that I'm just like picking up all the time because it's essays by people with very traumatic experiences that I'll never be able to understand. But anyways, this is also on my TBR. The next one is my Coho like book of the month. I try to read at least one of her books every month and we have the Maybe Someday series. And I've said this in other videos, but I hate, I accidentally got this one in the new cover and these in the old cover. I ordered it with the old cover, but it came with a new cover. So Anyways, it does say now with a brand new chapter, so I guess that's cool. I'll read the back of the first one. So it says, at 22 years old, Sydney is enjoying great life. She's in college, working a steady job, in love with her wonderful boyfriend, Hunter, and rooming with her best friend, Tori. But everything changes when she discovers that Hunter is cheating on her, and she's forced to decide what her next move should be. Soon, Sydney finds herself captivated by her mysterious and attractive neighbor, Rich. She can't take her eyes off of him or stop listening to the passionate way he plays his guitar every evening out of his balcony. And there's something about Sydney that Rich can't ignore either. They, they soon find themselves needing each other in more ways than one. A passionate tale of friendship, betrayal, and romance maybe someday will immerse readers in Sydney's tumultuous world from the very first page. And then the second book, it is like... It's a novella about other characters, so I'm just going to read it. It says, when Warren has the opportunity to live with a female roommate, he instantly agrees it could be an exciting change, or maybe not. Sorry. Especially when the roommate is a cold and seemingly calculating Bridget, tensions run high and tempers flare as the two can hardly stand in hardly stand to be in the same room together, but Warren has a theory about Bridget. Anyone who can hate with that much passion should also have the capability to love with that much passion. And he wants to be the one to test this theory. Will Bridget find it in herself to warm her heart to Warren and finally finally learn to love? Maybe, maybe not. So those are those two books. I'm not going to read the back of this just because I'm pretty sure it starts like right after maybe someday. Um, and I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, these are some of the last Colleen Hoover books that I have yet to read. I'm almost done with her entire backlist, which is insane. 
Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. I've heard some controversy surrounding this one because it does deal with cheating more so than All Your Perfect deals with it, at least like from what I'm aware of, of having not read this book yet. But I am super excited for it. I know there's like an entire playlist or something based off of this book with a singer, but yeah, I'm excited. And then this is actually the last book on my TBR. I don't know if I'll actually get to it. I tend to not get to my TBR often, but anyways, this one I just thought was fun. I picked this up at the beginning of September and that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is also the author of The Final Girl Support Club. Haven't read that, but I've seen a lot about it. But yeah, this one sounds super cool. I will go ahead and read you the little snippet. It says, Patricia Campbell's life has never felt smaller. Her husband is a workaholic. Her teenage kids have their own lives. Her senile mother-in-law needs constant care, and she's always a step behind on her endless to-do list. The only thing keeping her sane is her book club, a close-knit group of Charleston women united by their love of true crime. Then James Harris walks into her life during the summer of 1993. He makes her feel things she hasn't felt in years, but when children on the other side of town go missing, Patricia wonders if he's connected. Is he a Brad Pitt, a Bundy, or something much worse? So it sounds like this is a sub, like it's a summer book, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to read it in November. Maybe it'll bring me feelings of summer back, get me excited. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Hey guys, those are all 10 books I would like to read this month. As you can see, like a lot of them are school related, but that is just my life. So anyways, that is going to be at the end of this video. Let me know what you guys plan on reading in November. I would love to hear it, get some more book recs. Anyways, yeah, I have a little bit before my class starts, so I'm gonna go get ready and I will talk to you guys next time.